Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today is a very special episode of Fishing Explained, the Wide Bass Run. Of course, this is for March 2021. Texas is already slowing down on the Wide Bass Run. According to one of these YouTube guys I was talking to, Oklahoma, where I'm at, we're just getting fired up. For the past week or so, they've been they've been reporting that the white basses are already at the spawning grounds. So my attempt today is going to be baits, where, and when. Okay, so for the baits, I've selected three, my top three, uh, but I gotta have a reason for each one of these. So I'm gonna say, one is for the guys that want a challenge, and we'll have a you know a fun day out, do something a little different from the norm. Two, I'm gonna recommend a lure that is time proven here at the projects. Oh, uh, out of work outdoors, we have some lures that we lean on hard every time we look at a certain uh, species of fish, and we'll cover that. And one, another one is like you know the the little white bass. They they can they can be literally this big, all the way out to about that big. You know, so you go from about four inches up to 11, 12, 12 uh, maybe fifteen. So if you're if you're if you're running that school where there's just like a mix of big big fish and small fish, and you need a bigger lure that just says you know I only want to catch I don't want to catch anything less than ten inches. We got you covered too. Okay, so let me start with the lures. Let me start. Let me start with the guys that just want a challenge, right? Because who does want a challenge? Like if you want a challenge, do this. Go with an umbrella rig. Or in this case, this one specifically, this is one of our clear umbrella rigs made by a team member. Here, this is a lightweight version. This is not the standard version that you guys saw last month on the striper videos or the bass videos. This is a lightweight version. It's designed for crappies. It's designed for white bass. It's designed for you to hang grubs with ball heads on them. You know? And something like this, thrown into an aggressive school of white bass, I would be surprised if you don't catch two at a time, three at a time, four at a time, five at a time. So for something like this, it's all about challenges. You know, how many times can you catch more than three fish at a time? So for those guys, definitely look out for something like this. I like the green chartreuse color, but, you know, I don't think the bass really care. They're, they're, they're there to eat anything. So some people want all whites. Some people want all blues. Some people go different colors. Some people have redheads, blackheads, pinkheads. It's up to you. Whatever you like. Whatever you like. And, of course, you can just throw this by itself. That doesn't hurt at all. So, do that, too. That's for those guys that want to venture off a little bit, you know. But if you're going to ask me, one lure. One lure catches all of them. All of them. That would be this guy right here. This guy. Cotton Cordell Gay Blade, okay. Half ounce. Chartreuse color is my favorite color. I recommend changing the hooks out. But, you know, if you can't, you're like, I'm trying to keep it cheap. They work all right. Just be aware that you will, your hookup ratio is about 70% of the time if you don't change your hooks out. They're pretty sharp, but there's something about them. They're just not 100% hookup hooks. Change them out to some Gamagatsus or some owners. Problem solved, you know. But I like the chartreuse color because a lot of our areas here, they, they tend to muddy up when the rains come. So we got a lot of mud, and when you get mud, you got to throw chartreuse. So there it is. So basically, this is blade bait. You throw it out there, you just wind it back, and you get this vibration. A real strong, like, duh, 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 vibration. And I think a lot of times, the fish key in on vibration. So if they're biting a vibrating bait that day, money. 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 Alright, so what, what about the guys that are, uh, you know, I'm a little bit on the cheaper side. I can't afford an umbrella rig, but I still want to catch just the bigger fish. Just the bigger fish. So if you're one of those guys, I got you covered. And on the cheap, too. So, fluke body with a jig head. It's that simple, you know. Um, that probably costs $2 right here. And it's okay to break them off every once in a while, because if you're fishing a damn rocky bottom, you're probably going to throw it. 10 of these away every day okay so those are my picks those are my top threes 
And like I said, this one will probably not catch you any fish under eight inches. So they're all gonna be bigger than that. It's a cheap solution and it works really good, okay? Where? Where is actually pretty important right now too because when the fish go to spawn, they all, they all don't go together. So there's waves. So there's like a first wave, second wave, third wave. So there's multiple groups going to spawn. And then when that one's done, they come back, the next one kind of goes in. So look at your main creeks, right? Creeks with water flowing into them. Whether that's fed by a river or whether that's fed by a dam or multiple springs coming in, it's got to have some type of running water. If you have a creek that just goes and just dead ends, typically those creek, they're, they're, they're not as good, okay? So you want some type of running water. That's how the bass spawn. That's what they need to get their eggs to, to work. So creek with running water at the back of the pockets. Keep that in mind. That's a big thing, okay? Other than that, you got dams. Let me back up. We'll say dams. If you're not on a boat, look at main lake points too because they will stage on main lake points before they go up main lake points really really good uh creek channel or no creek channel sometimes it feels like it doesn't even matter it's not the winter no more they roam a lot this time of year so creek channel maybe better maybe not depends on the day other than that you got dams dams when the fish migrate up the river, and they all do, this is the time of year where they will go up as far as they can before they hit a dead end. Well, guess what? The dam is a dead end. Dams are fairly number one spots this time of year. March into April, it's hard to beat the dam. So if you got access to a dam with his white bass in it, and it's legal to fish there, it's hard to beat. I'll be honest, the dam is hard to beat. The fish come to you. You don't have to go chasing the fish like these other guys, okay? So dams, keep an eye out on the dams. They're fairly, they're fairly busy this time of year. There's a lot of people there, so you know, try not to, try not to engage in any, uh, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat while you're there. Uh, yeah, personal space, personal space, personal space. Uh, when are these white bass gonna hit? Say, so if you're on a boat, you go up the creeks, so you stay in the main channel, you find them. If you find them, they'll bite all day. That's the cool thing about the white bass during the spawn. They are hungry, they're on the move, they will eat anything to get fat to go spawn. Done, okay? But if you're not one of those guys on the boats, and you're the guys that's land-based, but if you're not on the dams, focus on the point. So if you're one of those guys, you're, you, you have to be on the point. You have to be on land, it's back to prime time. So they're not always going to bite because they're still offshore, but they will come to the shore to chase bait between four and and dark so if you're out there between 4 and dark I think it's dark around 7.30 right now so between 4 7.30 maybe even pushing it something always just kind of weird as soon as it goes dark they kind of shut off but typically that 30 minute window right before the sun like disappears or the light disappears is usually pretty good so keep it, keep that in mind if you're fishing land based stuff points definitely points or if you're, if you're in a pocket Pockets are cool too. It has to be a wind-blown pocket. If it's not a wind-blown pocket, typically they're not there. So that's the other exception. Wind-blown pockets, especially if it's been blowing into the pocket for the last three days. It might be the exception to the rule. But other than that, that's everything. Um, I hope you guys uh I hope you guys take something out of this. I hope this helps point you in the right direction. I hope my lore uh, recommendations are pretty good. And if you like to add to the list, go ahead in the comments. Just add to the list. Everybody else can, uh, you know, benefit from it. And, uh, yep, that's White Bass Runs, man. Uh, tag us. Tag us in your Instagrams at Out of Work Outdoors so we can see uh, how long that stringer is or how much you got in that cooler. Because, like I said, White Bass... Depends on where you fish. Some spots, there's no limit. So you can go in there and pull out two coolers. It's on you. So anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you on the next one. All right, guys? See ya.